Uh, so this is the plan. We're going to make a game, but right now we know absolutely nothing about coding up a game. So we're going to need to create some sort of game dev like path our pathway to creating this game because as i said we know absolutely nothing so i'm going to structure this in a way where i norm this is how i would normally learn um this is how i learned programming in general but for games development like as an indie i genuinely don't know how it goes so i've got a general idea of the path i'm going to take so this is going to be our game dev path it's going to go something like this we're going to ground my ideas so i'm going to show you the ideas i have for the game and then we're going to find an engine to make the game in. I'm not sure which engine I'm going to use, but I think I've got one in mind. I just need to validate if it's worth my time making this game in. And then we're going to take a general course on that specific engine and make something very simple. This way I'll be able to learn the interface of the engine and all the basics because I already know how to code. So it would just be trying to learn that uh, language for that engine if that makes sense so i'll need to spend some time doing that and learning the ui and how things work within um, that specific engine and i'm going to take um i'm going to make a game or two um by following a tutorial on udemy the reason i'm following udemy is because i feel like that's the most pain-free way so there's a lot of youtube videos that are good but a lot of them are missing in details and stuff like that i feel like udemy usually has better instructors for stuff like this in general but i'm just assuming so this is just the path that i'm deciding to take but i don't know if it's going to be the right one but let's just see how it goes so the first step will be to grab my ideas so let me show you the ideas that i've got for the game our game is going to be very very simple now the premise of the game is to play with a friend it's going to be a two-player game and you're able to grow plants together. So think of it as a greenhouse of plants and you and your friends are able to take care of these plants. Now I made a really, really simple diagram here with my artboards and it's going to show you how the game basically functions. So we're gonna have a bunch of stuff that affects the plant health, such as fertilizer, watering, repellent, oxygen, and weather. Things of those nature, they might change, but for now, that's how that's the way that I see it going forward. And then there's also going to be stuff that would degrade or damage the plants, such as bugs and not having enough sunlight or oxygen, things of that nature. But it's going to be very, very simple. The premise is you and a friend play the game together and you're able to grow different plants and take care of them. I've got another part here which deals with weather and climate. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to do this. It's going to be based on how I'm presenting these plants if they're outdoor, indoor, or inside a greenhouse, for example. And this is just an example, <laughs> this is a bad drawing, but it's an example of the greenhouse I want and the way the plants are gonna be displayed. So everything's really, really rough right now, but I think this is gonna be a great start to the idea that I have. I'm gonna show you how I visually want the plants to look. So this is the art style essentially. I want some type of pixel art for this project because i think pixel art is just more charming I, I feel like plants as well especially look really good in a pixel art style oh this one's actually really nice yeah we could use something like this i like how this looks it's very simple yeah this might actually be i'm gonna save this and this looks really good as well there's so many references that we can use actually for the game that we want to make. I know when it comes to game making and stuff like that, I don't want to get too carried away because right now the ideas that I have and the art style and all that type of thing sounds pretty simple in my mind, but I know that can suddenly change and complexities can come and the stuff that I want to work doesn't work. I'm not really thinking like that. I'm keeping everything in right now. And then when the time comes, if I have to change anything, then I will. But for now, I think this idea is good enough to move forward with. So in my game dev path, the next thing I need to do 
it's to find an engine that I actually want to make the game in. So I'm going to do some research and then I'm going to, I've got two things in my mind, honestly, which is Unity and Godot. So I'm just going to do some quick research and, and then see which one will work for me. After watching a video by a guy called Goodgis, I think that's what his YouTube name is. I think I'm going to end up using Godot um, as my engine. The reason why is because it just looks appealing to me. I think that's the, the best reason for me using Godot. It just looks appealing and I like the fact that it uses GD script, which looks like Python and it just seems very simple to use in general. So I think I'm just going to use Godot. Finally, I'm going to find a course to follow on Udemy. I'm going to do some quick research on what course I want to use. Uh, I'm going to show you what my results are and the reasons why I've picked them. So the two courses that I'm going to be using to learn how to just use Godot in general is going to be discovering Godot and creating an RPG game with Godot engine. So you make four different games in 2D and 3D. So these will give me a general introduction to like, say this one's an introduction to GD script. So that's going to be super useful to me. And the second one is um, how to make an RPG game in Godot. And it just covers a bunch of stuff. So I think this will also be useful to me. So I'm going to use these two videos as guides to get into Godot. The next step is just for me to start this introduction to Godot course and because I've got a programming background, I just want to see how similar Godot, GD script and Godot are in terms of its concepts and see if I can understand them. So I'm going to start with that course. I'm going to finish the first game and then we're going to have a little review after to see if anything actually makes sense. <laughs> So let's go through the game that we basically made. It's very simple. The whole purpose of the game is to introduce us into the concepts of Godot, which has been really, really good for me. I'm going to talk about some similarities uh, real soon in terms of uh, the code and stuff like that. But this has been a really good intro for me. So this game is just a word game where you pass in text and then it basically spits out like a story for you. But it's an example in exercising certain concepts, certain programming concepts, and it's a good way. So let's type in a name. Let's just quickly play the game. Um, a movie, Django, and an adjective, powerful. So once upon a time, someone named Toba watched a movie called Django and thought it was the most powerful movie of all time. Now, let's go over what the concepts that I've learned through making this game are. And I've, I've learned quite a lot and it's going to help me into making this plant game. It might not seem like it now, but it actually helps a lot. So what we learned so far on this, I've learned that um, everything is the same essentially from, say, the Swift language or something, because that's my closest comparison to GD scripts on a language that I know very well. So dictionary an array is an array a dictionary is a dictionary you know we've still got stuff like on ready which is a really interesting concept because on ready reminds me of like a weak variable that would be in swift so something very similar to text here is not initialized until it's ready so you never have any instances of where you're trying to reference some text from um say our text field or whatever this is called and we've got no reference to it so it's really interesting so it's initialized when we need it this is a connection like a signal so similar to something like a binding so it basically alerts you or returns a function or a method in a closure of when something has been done so when you press enter it returns the text in the text field 
So that's really interesting. So that's what we learned so far. So I've seen concepts like this before, which is really, really interesting. So it makes the learning process a lot easier. I think if you've never programmed before, you don't have a reference of a language, it can make this whole process seem like super complicated because I think if I dived into this and I didn't know how to code previously, um, I'll just be typing code without fully understanding it. But I've got a reference point for all these things. Um, yeah, but so far so good. So we have just gone and finished our first game. So now it's time to go on to the second course. This seems tedious, but trust me, I feel like this is gonna help me in the long run because I'm covering all the stuff that I would have to Google and all I'm doing is sacrificing like 10 hours of my time before I actually get into my own game development, which I think is a little bit smarter. So when I'm Googling stuff now, if I get stuck, I have context to what I'm Googling. That's one of the biggest points of even taking a course before I start um, making my own game. And I wanna get out of this tutorial cycle as quickly as possible, because one of the worst things from my experience of programming is that you don't wanna be in a tutorial hell where you just, you, can't, you cannot make anything without a tutorial. So I'm gonna finish this RPG game and then we're gonna move on and start making our game. It's the end of the week and we finally have something that is working on this RPG game. It's not a complete RPG game because there's still additional things that I need to add. But for the end of the first week, it's very, very good progress. So, so far, I know how to add a character to the scene. I know how to create add sprites for the different directions that the character moves in. We also have a sword attack. For our character which is really really cool and we're able to collide with other objects in the scene for example we can interact with um, this house by going behind it um, and changing the opacity for the house finally we're able to go inside another scene being able to go from one scene to the other seamlessly so there's a lot that's been learned here there's no actual collisions in this scene so I can basically walk off the map but adding that would be something extra. I just, the whole point of this is just to know the complete basics of Godot. And I think I've accomplished that. And I'm pretty proud of how the first week's gone. I haven't had too much time to work on everything, but so far, so good. That's one week of development. And honestly, um, on a scale of one to 10 on difficulty, I'd give it like a five, simply because it's a tutorial and I'm not really pushing myself that crazy because I'm not branching out to try and make my own stuff or get stuck on my own problems. But so far, I'm super glad that I've followed these tutorials so far. And the next thing to do is just to go out, go on our own path and start creating the art style and defining like the UI and everything that I want. I know I've already showed you guys the, the concepts that I have, but now it's about fleshing those out and making the game really come to life. But I know that I've got a bunch of stuff here that I can use as a reference to go back on. So I'm super happy with that. So that's week one wrapped up of this game dev development.